And hello there. And I'm delighted for this conversation today that I'm joined by the director for Nanyang Technological University, um, Dr. Alessandro Romagnoli is with us here. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. Now, when we look at the net zero plans to 2050, and again, what everybody is talking about, I think we clearly see that, you know, we have to develop climate technology that really doesn't exist today. And sometimes we wonder, are the plans there? Um, you know, who's on top of this? What do you think? Are you optimistic that the technology is actually advancing at the speed that we needed to? Uh, yes, um, I would say that um, I'm optimistic. Uh, about the current development of uh, technologies. And I would say that the most important technologies that I can see uh, coming online are uh, carbon capture storage, hydrogen, electrification, and uh, of all possible industries together with energy storage. Uh, if I have to make one comment, I mean, one of the biggest hurdles here is to um, is cost and scale uh, for clean tech technologies. And uh, for instance, with the current subsidy, green hydrogen costs are already close to being low enough for mass uh, uh, adoption. And Europe is also considering similar measures to, uh, uh, to the Inflation Reduction Act. And of course, that's what it's all about. It's always about the money and making sure that we move them up to scale. Again, let's have a look at investments and particularly new climate technologies. Um, do you have any concerns at the moment in terms of where that investor capital is going and how it's being deployed? Yeah, I mean, I can see that there is a more willingness to invest um, capital in climate tech. And uh, however, I would say there are two main aspects that needs to be considered, which is, I would call it patience and uh, assistance. So when I, what, I, what I mean by patience is the fact that, uh, as we know, this sort of technology has a longer payback time. And often it requires an upfront uh, investment, which is not negligible. And on the other side, I can also see that what hinders um, the uptake of climate tech is not just the capital, but also the presence of an adequate uh, ecosystem and the policy in place to make sure that you know the investment is safer and is better positioned to make an impact them, for the environment. Um, talk to me now about the existing technology, and you actually mentioned there uh, carbon capture. I mean, how excited should we be about this now? We've been talking about it for several years, but I often get the feeling that that this its its time has come. Yeah, I mean, I would say this is a good time for carbon capture. The, the cost of existing technologies uh, is being reduced, of course, with an increased market size, but also new technologies are being developed aimed up indeed to lower the cost and, and also designed to suit uh, some specific requirements. So for instance, let's speak uh, direct air capture. So if you look at direct air capture, there are countries like uh, the United States, Japan, Canada, Europe indeed, and the United Kingdom that did the uh, early investment in that and also in the, in the deployment. And, and also, if you want to look more, more, more holistically, uh, direct carbon air capture can also combine with a uh, low uh, energy sources, uh, low carbon energy sources, such as, um, you know, geothermal, uh, waste heat and heat pumps, which makes the case more compelling. So I can see a tech development is there. The willingness of the technology and understanding of the technology is growing. Uh, and therefore, I can see that the ingredients potentially to, to see carbon capture to be um, off, off take over the next five to 10 years. And again, looking beyond direct air capture, heat pumps, all of that, I mean, are there other technologies that are there, you know, maybe not as widely known, but technologies that we probably should be keeping an eye on? And again, how can they maybe help us accelerate that journey to, you know, towards net zero, basically? Yeah, no, thanks for the, the question. In fact, I mean, if you look at climate tech, uh, there are um, five groups that combine together are worth almost $2 trillion in capital investment by 2025, all together indeed could lead to a 40% CO2 emission reduction by 2050. So these five groups are electrification, carbon capture, hydrogen, tech in, in agriculture, and power grid. So if I should pick one technology under the power grid umbrella, I can see that long-term energy storage utilizing mechanical, thermal, and chemical methods offer potentially an inexpensive and a site independent 
electrical energy storage unlike conventional batteries. So there are R&D and pre-commercial projects for long-term uh, energy storage in place globally. And I believe this could play you know, an active role towards uh, the uh, energy and decarbonization agenda over the short, medium term. And of course, all of these technologies will be up for discussion and tremendous analysis, you know, particularly at the Climate Tech Program at Gas Tech 2023. Talk to me about if you have, you know, any sort of wishes for takeaways. What do you really want to see the discussions being around and particularly, again, within the Climate, climate Tech Program? I would say that the main, the main goal for the, for the climate tech and you know, for all the stakeholders taking place to the, to, the gas, to the gas tech, in fact, is that of decarbonizing the entire energy value chain. And in order to do so, there are a number of dimensions that need to come together. Uh, and if I can summarize, I could summarize this in three main macro areas. So the first one is the need uh, to expand the talent pool uh, and foster innovation and creation of new startups and ventures, because there is more and more demand of new solutions and also the talents willing to you know, put their effort for uh, climate change. The second, as I mentioned, is the, uh, the, the, um, the presence of adequate policies and investment enabling a rapid deployment and scaling up of zero carbon energy solution and carbon capture is one of these. And finally, finally I would say there is an opportunity behind artificial intelligence, climate tech, uh, blockchain and similar that is still a bit unknown on how much they could potentially contribute and drive emissions reduction. So these are the trade remainers that I believe would be centered in the discussion at gas tech and also as part of the climate, uh, new tech and climate tech. Well, we're all looking forward to it. It'll be very exciting. And I think when we see all of these, you know, new technologies on the horizon, this is definitely what will get people, you know, very interested, very excited in what's going on and hopefully get the investors there to back all the great work that you're doing. Again, thank you so much. Uh, we'll talk uh, in September at Gas Tech. We're looking forward to seeing you and everybody else there. Thank you. Looking forward to that. Have a good day. Thank you so much.